We're both storytellers mm -hmm. and we're both musicians. We've been singing for years. As part of the Gullah tradition and the West African tradition, most of our songs are call and response. So a leader calls out the words and um, everyone else joins in. And the, the phrases are very repetitive, so they get a chance to sing along. Come on, everybody, march. We always tell kids this is participatory stuff. You know, you don't just sit here and stare at us. You've got to involve us or, or we can't do it. We're playing in a rain band. First they giggle. They go, oh my God, what is it? And then they start getting involved and they start singing and clapping. And, you know, it's good stuff for body percussion. So they clap and they stomp and, and they move. We interact with them. We have them doing things. So it's a learning process for them without them realizing that they're being taught anything. They're just enjoying it. Gala Gala Island, weekdays on Nick Jr. TV for the next generation. Kick it. Let's all come play together in the bright sunny weather. Slicers, welcome to Splat Attack of 90s podcast. Overflowing to the Slimefield Pass. <laughs> well, it sort of worked. Anyways, <laughs> I'm your beachcombing nature ranger, Brett. And I'm your cuddly yellow pollywog, Alex. And Brett. Yes, Alex. As I navigate this slime tank across the southeastern coast, I spot an island offshore. Uh, what do you think this place could be? Uh, I, I have a feeling it's somewhere we fondly remember from our childhood. You know, I, I think it looks like a place where kids sing and dance, make things, and even play along with two wholesome parents who care about the people around them and love teaching them lessons. Uh, of course, I'm talking about the Nick Jr. hit show, Gullah Gullah Island, which you may remember from the mid-90s. Oh, yes. Bless you. No, that was a cough. Ah. <coughs> well, Got some sea air clogging up my throat. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I do happen to know a, a seafaring beachgoer who very much loves going to the beach, as well as Gullah Gullah Island. Mm -hmm. And uh, because she's right here next to me, we can't teleport her in like we did for the Tomorrow People. My lovely wife, Megan, is going to join us for this uh, retrospective of Gullah Gullah just before she goes to the beach. We've actually started packing. We started packing tonight. Yes. It, looking forward to get rid of her. Get, get rid of her. Get, getting, getting rid of yeah. get, get, her. Right. Sure. Yeah. Sure. I know. I'm so excited. Sh shipping her off the sandier shores. <laughs> no, it's more like I'll get the piece. Welcome to the slime tank. Yet again, Meg, how are you today? Thank you. I'm good. I'm very good. Uh, getting excited because I'm leaving tomorrow and I'm on vacation from work. So that's always a plus. <laughs> it, it's certainly vacation we, uh, season. season uh, yeah. yeah, this time of year. So what better place to be than Gullah Gullah Island because we're practically on vacation as we near the end of season four. Uh, hard to believe. So, going along with Gullah Gullah, I guess I, I'm, I'm going to have some things to say. But you, however, I'm sure you're going to have far different things to say. And you are going purely on memory. Mm -hmm. uh, because Megan did not have the opportunity to uh, preview any episodes prior to this episode. Right. Um, we tried, Slimesters, we, we really tried to get Ron and Natalie to be a part of the episode. And... They are very busy, and even people who have had interviews with them have all said this is a rare instance, and they are they are busy. Uh, Natalie does a lot of things. She teaches and does stories and all kinds of artwork, and she, she does a lot of things, and uh, Ron has got his own uh, little dessert uh, side business, and uh, they, they stay busy. And not to mention everybody else who is a part of the show is also just as elusive. So unfortunately, we couldn't get anybody from the show for this episode, which was understandable, but we would have loved to have had them. And uh, and we tried to also get this part of the, the, the last tail end of this podcast. We've been having some scheduling issues with uh, several guests, and not just for this episode, but for some others that are coming out. We, we, we still got some. It's still going to be a lot of fun. It's just proving to be uh, it's 
as we just pointed out, it's vacation time and people are busy. So with with this in mind, and I did have a few friends that wanted to be here for this episode, mm -hmm. but they also were busy. So Megan had said, uh, and we, we don't usually like to have the same guests within a season come back again because we want to try to keep the, the guests varied. But we didn't have anybody. And Megan said, I loved Gullah Gullah Island as a kid. So we, I've, I've had the chance to watch a few episodes, uh, uh, a few episodes a season. Brett has watched, I, gosh, I don't know how many episodes. 80% most, uh, of, the, most of the series. Wow. <laughs> and, uh, and Megan has had no prep. So this is, this is all raw emotion and, and uh, memory. So mm -hmm. what do you remember about Gullah Gullah Island? And well, let me rephrase that. What memories do you have related to Gullah Gullah Island? I mean, the main thing for me was always the theme song because I loved singing along to it. It was such a catchy tune. And that's one thing about the 90s, what they were known for with a lot of their TV shows was their catchy theme songs and their TV themes. And they had such a very charming and catchy tune. And, and it was one thing I do remember about it was the family aspect of it. And I love that it was an African-American family, um, which, again, not a lot of of thing we see a lot of that and it was good to get that type of an ass and it also being from Africa so that was a nice touch so I remember that too but as far as details from the episode I can't remember because it's been a long time um, I would love to show my little one the show if yeah you remember imagine. you remember Binya Binya yeah the little yellow, yellow polywog yeah. polywog yep yeah. polywog polywog a cracker yes yep polywog a cracker <laughs> Um, oh, oh. Uh, now you are two years younger than I am, mm -hmm. and I know my impressions of Nick Jr. as a whole, including Gullah Gullah Island, which I will share with later, but you were closer to the target demographic when this came out. I mean, you were still a little older for it, but... I'll admit, I actually watched a lot of Nick Jr. as like a teenager, <laughs> because it was what's on TV. Like, if mm -hmm. we were home, and... I, you know, I just, I turned it on and I loved them. I'm, a, I'm just one of those that I, I like Nick Jr. shows. I mean, I watched some Blue's Clues. I watched uh, Little Bear. I watched Franklin. That was actually my favorite. <laughs> I loved Franklin. <laughs> um, and Delaga Island mm -hmm. and uh, Eureka's Castle. Another big one. That, yeah, that I was I huge. I really like that one yeah. too. And to go off the off of your point about it being an African American family, because if you really think about cable TV in the '90s, most of the audience was middle class white mm -hmm. American family. Mm -hmm. uh, most of it was. That obviously has changed through the course of time, but because that was their big audience, that's most of the shows that you saw. And um, which was why it was such a big deal when my brother and me came out and why Gullah Gullah Island came out. And you got to see a different culture for both types of families, which was really fun to see. And it wasn't really, how can I say this? It, it wasn't really pushing anything. It was just, this is who we are. Mm -hmm. And this was our lifestyle. Yeah. And that was really cool to yes. see. Yes, yes. Because I feel like nowadays everything is they're trying. I feel like they're pushing an agenda, and and it's it's sad that it had to, it has to come to that mm -hmm. because that's them just screaming like, hey, hey, you know, we're here too, you know. Um, so, but it that yeah, like you said, that aspect of it was what made it so unique because mm -hmm. they weren't doing that. It was just a like, here we are. What uh, what memories do you have with Gullah Gullah Island, Brett? Uh, a lot of them because I was the target demographic at the time. 1994 mm -hmm. was a very good year for me when it came to Nickelodeon TV. And I remember watching this a lot, um, both on my own with my sister who's two years younger than me, and also my brother who's eight years younger than me because he was born in 96. So right in the middle of the show's run. Um, and the first couple of years he joined in with us on um, like watching Blue's Clues and Franklin, Little Bear, Kipper, you name it. And um, Gully Gully was one of the shows that he got in on it. And I just remember just the feeling of camaraderie and friendship and positivity that emanated from the show that really resonated with us. And we didn't really care that the family was 
uh, African American, so to speak, because that didn't that wasn't a barrier to us. That wasn't something we really thought about as a kid, and especially when you know we would have school assemblies, even in elementary school, about diversity and why celebrating different cultures is so important. Because not everyone comes from the same walk of life growing up. Um, this was the perfect opportunity to apply what I've learned by viewing something that's from a different perspective within our country and embracing it for what it has to offer us, whether it's singing, dancing, crafts, um, stories, lessons, you name it. I mean, Gullah Gullah Island's got it all, and it feels like one of the best families to ever grace television. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I've got a, a, a very different... <laughs> Oh, no. I've got a very <laughs> different take. I am going to be the stick in the mud, but not the current stick in the mud. Uh, because back in when this came out, uh, I am the oldest uh, on this episode. And m when I was the target demographic for Nick Jr., none of the original Nick content stuff was out. Uh, that was when they were doing a lot of resyndicated shows. Like they would have the world of David the Gnome and Sharon Lewis and Bram's Elephant Show and uh, Sebastian and Bell, Little Bits, the Noozles, all those uh, cheap anime that they were able to get and, and port through Nickelodeon. That was what I grew up with. Eureka's Castle was the only uh, original Nick Jr. show that I watched because uh, that was the only Nick, orig Nick Jr. original show they had. Uh, and I enjoyed that. But most of the other shows, I just didn't... I don't know why. I didn't connect with them. They were they were background noise while I would go play and wait for Looney Tunes and Inspector Gadget to come on later. Uh, but I didn't dislike them. By the time Nick Jr. really hit its stride with all the shows that both Megan and Brett were, were mentioning, I was well out of that target range. And I was that kid who would get annoyed with the entire Nick Jr. block. Uh, because I just wanted to pl just get to Nickelodeon. And it was always on days when we were at home from school for That's some summer reason. Break or something. Yeah, summer break, summer break because they, they still had Nick Jr. in the morning and then early afternoon they would have Stick Stickly for the summer. Yeah. Uh, or if it was like election day and schools were out, but parents still had to go to work. So I'd end up watching Price is Right or uh, uh, Bob Ross. And then would go back to Nickelodeon, and I'd have to watch whatever was on Nick Jr. And Face, I, I didn't. Now Face was <laughs> like <laughs> Face come in in like the two thousand, so no, no, no. Really? Uh, uh, Face was yeah. around. It's Face like mid to like, late nineties. Yeah. Well, I thought Face was also around in the two thousand. He was. I remember it being on whenever Jace was little. My nephew mm -hmm. Jace. Yeah, he was still on. Seen that now, but he's. Back then he was born in 06, so I remember seeing it because we watched Nick Jr. Mm -hmm. with him all the time. <laughs> but I face oh if if you Hi, yeah. if you all were here for our uh top five Nick Jr. shows, I may be the only person that did not like face, and I still don't care for face. Uh, I've tried to get back into being, you know, I, I am a completionist and try to find all the Nick Nickelodeon Nick Jr. stuff. I, I can't. I can't do face. I can't. And um, Little Bear, I was okay with, but I didn't really enjoy it. But now that I'm an adult and I'm going back and watching these shows again, it's a, it's an adorable show. Mm -hmm. I love the show now. But I was such an angry child that I didn't want to watch it. Same with Richard Scary. I didn't mm -hmm. like that show either. But now I'm going back and finding all the old episodes again, and it's, I, I like this too. And then when we did... Um, what was the other Nick Jr. show that we were talking about? Um, Franklin? Rupert? No, uh, it was one that you and I had talked about. Blue's Clues. Blue's Clues, yeah. I didn't care for Blue's Clues either. Uh, Blue was fine. Steve with that really nice, sweet, pandering voice to children. Now, that's not really what he did, but when I'm like eight and nine years old and I'm wanting something that's older and there's nothing else older and I have to watch this toddler show, my anger would just fuse. I'm glad your oldest didn't get that from you because he apparently still likes to watch kiddie shows. He does. Like, he like he does. <laughs> but I couldn't stand it when I was a kid, but now going back and watching Blue's Clues now, why did I get angry over this? It was really stupid for me to get angry over all of these shows 
uh, and and they're really cute. So going back and watching Gullah Gullah again, I was looking forward to it because I was thinking, man, I really hope my attitude has changed because I did not like Gullah Gullah Island. <laughs> I think of all the shows at the time, Gullah Gullah was the one that I despised the most. And the reason I didn't was because of Binya Binya. Oh. The voice is what got to me. Mm. I I couldn't stand the voice when I you was... You mean you don't like this voice? I, I, <laughs> I couldn't stand that voice. Uh. I remember getting so angry. It the, the way I felt about Binya Binya as a kid is the way Star Wars fans felt about Jar Jar Binks. Mm. Like, yeah. I, I didn't like... I didn't I didn't dislike the show as a whole but I was trying to enjoy it while I was doing whatever I was wanting to play with at the time cuz again background noise and Star Wars fans will probably admit that Star Wars Phantom Menace could be tolerable without Jar Jar Binks and then every time he'd show up then it was just oh go away it was almost starting to be okay and that's that's the way I felt every time Benya Benya would show up. Like, oh, come on, that that wasn't a... It, I was almost having fun. But uh, now going back and watching the show again, and uh, I will say that my attitude has changed. That's Not good. entirely, though. Uh, I I still don't care for Benya Benya, but not to the degree that it was. And it's still the voice. Uh, in small spurts, he's fine. I can take that. Whenever he's doing short little answers, you know, bim, 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 bim. but whenever there, there were some times he was carrying on a conversation and that got old really fast. Oh, yeah! In the morning time! And now, oh, hello, everybody! Car! Oh, you room, you room, driving! And that cleaner to drive! Who the trash? No good. Yeah. Uh, he works better when he's speaking in small portions but uh, i i actually agree with you there because i feel like when i attempted to watch the the binya binya show spinoff i'm just like why are all mm -hmm. these puppets talking so much i just yeah. like it when they do their little catchphrases that's yes. all they need we don't need them to feel like a human in a in a mascot suit or something yes. i just want them to do their little stick and then play along with the kids like we normally do so it's one of those situations where less is more really helps the performance yes especially for those characters same with barney which surprisingly has quite a few connections but um, yeah i i agree with you the for gullah gullah and for barney you want the human characters are are what really sells the show, yeah. and it's Binya Binya that kind of gets the hook because then you it can, you see the commercials and you're what's this character? What's this little polywog thing? And I can handle him dancing and playing, and I like the character. I like that he's a young polywog and he's mischievous and playful and Curious. causes a bit of mischief, but not maliciously. He's just young and naive and doesn't understand right. some of the issues that he's doing. And I can handle the small spurts of, you know, read or read. read. Yeah, but whenever, yeah. whenever he's having to carry conversation, like, okay, it's, no, it's You're becoming too, too sentient. No. Dumb it, dumb it down. <laughs> so, and I would say my my level for appreciation is right about eighty uh, percent. I really enjoy the show, but that twenty percent is just binya binya. It's it's funny because I can tolerate Binya Binya to a point like you said with the long sentences being too much, but there's some moments where I feel like, okay, I'm definitely outside of the demographic for the show as an adult because there's a lot of eye rolling dialogue in here and it's like they oh, burst in the song every five minutes and that's just a <laughs> little bit too much musical for me. I maybe want one to three songs per episode, not eight to ten. And I correct me if I'm mistaken, I don't think season one was that bad. I think season one had it was very balanced with like yeah. the lesson of the day and even going off stage to you know local charleston areas to, to integrate some of the culture that they're talking about and some yeah. of the activities which is fine but like i would say after season two that's when they started to ramp up the, the studio production effects and trying different things and adding chance and, and you know really pushing hard with to maintain their audience before their end after season four yeah, yeah. I, I noticed that there was a lot more songs, uh, less culture, and more just 
uh, antics. Like that's that's not what made you so special in the first two seasons. Yeah, it's kind of like one of those uh, moments when you watch him perform on stage and he can feel the audience losing interest in them. So he like just bursts out the song and goes, hello, my baby. Hello, my darling. Hello, my <laughs> ragtime gal before the giant cane pulls him off stage. It's like the Hail Mary of, of performance. <laughs> <laughs> and that's not to say that it's bad. It's no, not, not that it's at bad all. at all. It's just, no, you just can, observations. As, as an adult going back and watching these shows, the first two seasons did have a better balance. But seasons three and four are definitely targeted more for younger kids. And uh, it, it seems like they lost trying to appeal to both kids and adults and just kids, which, you know, it's Nick Jr. That's where yeah. their focus really should be. Right. James Edward Coleman II, who, who passed away fairly recently, he was the son of James Coleman, who played the dad on Brother and Me. Oh. Uh, so that, and, and he had posted about that uh, on Instagram a few years ago. So it's very sad, but that is a pretty cool connection to see these two shows linked together, especially because of their relevance of what they portrayed for a new audience. So that's still cool. Uh, but uh, a couple years ago, Ron and Natalie Days appeared on a podcast called Purple Roads, uh, hosted by Carrie Stinson, known for playing Barney, everyone's favorite purple dinosaur. <laughs> uh, they go into more detail about the show, and it's a great interview, so check it out when you get the chance. We will put the link in the description. Indeed. Yeah, it, it's actually funny you mentioned um, James' connection to Roger from My Brother and Me because all throughout watching these episodes, something about the way he spoke reminded me so much of Alfie and Goo fused into one person. I'm like, <laughs> I'm getting so much My Brother and Me vibes from James and then of course Keenan and Kel with Vanessa because she also played Kyra on that show around the same time this was going on. So it's like they're all huddling together to represent on Nickelodeon, which I think is great. <laughs> yeah, most definitely. And which it's really weird to see that uh, in the mid to late 90s we were really getting some of that culture because we had we had what Ron and Natalie were throwing in for Gullah Gullah and then we had what uh, the creators were making for with my brother and me where it's it's not the culture that Ron and Natalie had but it's a more urban culture that other people weren't having it, it was also taking place in South Carolina I believe around Charlotte mm -hmm. yes Charlotte and uh, also all that, uh, because even, yes, you, we did have some people who obviously looked like us, but most of it were, I mean, Keenan and Kel and um, Angelique and um, the the three of them, I mean, it was a good mix. Mm -hmm. And then you get into the later seasons and they added too much cream to the coffee and now it's just pure cream, but, uh, now I think that's changed whenever the, the last one came out in 2019 and they, they went back to balancing it out pretty well. But still to see that, because I hadn't even heard really paid attention to hip hop and things like that. So to see these different cultures that were being sprinkled throughout Nickelodeon, because I get that's one of the things that both Brett and I love so much about Nickelodeon in the 90s. They want to do everything. Yeah. Uh, they Even Nick Jr., Every show is different. Mm -hmm. Every show has an identity, and every show is about trying to grasp a different demographic within this large demographic of children. And that's really awesome to see. They don't do that anymore. Yeah. Most shows don't do that anymore. And if they do, it's a big deal. Uh, it's the first show to have this. I mean, yay, cool, but just mm -hmm. just be you, you know? You don't 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 cram it down people's throats. You didn't cram this stuff down our throats when we were kids, and we loved these shows. Uh, well, you all loved these shows. I was a I was a turd of a child who who uh, yeah I was definitely a hater in the nineties. <laughs> but I was I don't know why I was. It was really stupid. To be fair, I used to make fun of Blue's Clues 2, mainly Steve, because I thought he was like too obvious with his instructions to the viewer. But honestly, once once I started watching it with my brother and seeing it through his eyes, I'm like, oh yeah, this is, actually encourages them to participate and use their imagination and sense of curiosity. So, you know, I think the characters are well-designed and very cute and relatable. And I, I love how they jump into the pictures. So there's there's a lot to offer there. Again, if you peel back the, the layers of the onion to see what it is at its core. 
because we're we were kids, and and all even even our children, as much as we love them and want to put them on a pedestal, they they are flawed just like we are, mm -hmm. and a lot of times children are selfish. Not all the time, but quite a bit of the time, children can be selfish. Even adults can be selfish. So uh, when Nick Jr. was really hitting its stride, and and I had said this before in a, on our Nick Jr.'s episode, uh, or new, Nick favorite Nick Jr. shows episode, mm -hmm. that I was that. I, this is how I was. I was angry all the time over Nick Jr. And then it was uh, my teacher who had pointed out while Nick Jr. was on, we had like an in, in, in classroom picnic. We got to take our, our our lunch to the classroom and she turned on Nick Jr. while we ate. And by now I was in like third or fourth grade and uh, Blue's Clues was on and everyone collectively in the room went, Ugh. <laughs> and uh, she said, now, uh, no, don't because this show is really cute. And then, of course, most of the girls were going, it is? <laughs> and all the other boys were like, uh, uh. And then she said, yes, because... And then she started talking about her little one and how the show is really targeted for that age, not our age, and was telling about how they educate things. Now we're watching it, and we're really listening for these things and how they're educating to smaller, younger kids uh, mm -hmm. that, who are in preschool or and younger. And for the first time, I really stopped being so angry about it. I still didn't like it, but mm -hmm. I I was not the age for it. But now as an adult, and I've said it before, I'll, I'll keep saying it. Uh, as an adult, I, I adore these shows and uh, for what they did, for what they accomplished, for uh, the education, and the fact that you can still turn these shows on and you can still learn these w really wonderful lessons that haven't aged at all. Um, because, I mean, they still had one where they were talking about meeting uh, somebody new, which we'll get into, and uh, the, you're going to meet your cousin or somebody that you've not seen before. I hope they like me. And then also having to deal with bad attitudes and feelings and uh, in addition to just some fun songs and fun culture. It mm -hmm. was a really good balance. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. There's something for everyone here in the show, and I, I love the diversity that they celebrate. Like, across 70 episodes, they do everything they can to cover their, their bases from, um, you know, a Christmas episode to birthday parties, meeting new friends, uh, saving sea turtles. I mean, there's just tons of stuff to enjoy here. And you really get a deeper sense of what their life is like, even if it's like a proxy life on a stage mixed with a little bit of live action footage. And I will share this on, uh, on screen just because it was it was fun. I thought it was cool. Uh, oh man, I'm gonna have to go pull it up now. But uh, over on the gram of Insta, <laughs> uh, I had shared a uh, picture of Binya Binya, and I believe it was from the show Binya Binya, not the uh, not Gullah Gullah mm -hmm. Island the spin off thing. Yes, okay. and uh, Natalie Days had actually commented on it. Uh, it, it's no information that we hadn't already shared, but it was cool to see that she had responded. And uh, what she said was, Philip Garcia uh, gave Binya his voice and personality. He was phenomenally talented. After his death, Justin Campbell stepped into the role. He put on 10 pounds of muscle just in his quads. And he stepped into the character role and, all in caps, nailed it. Hmm. Yep. Yeah. I mean, with all that hopping going on, he had to have been buff under that costume. And it's funny you mentioned that because that's one of the things that stood out to me when I was listening to, um, what's his name? Barney. Uh, Carrie Stinson's podcast, The Purple Road, um, just before this episode, actually. And I'm like, wow, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. You know, doing all that hopping around, it, it's a workout. You don't think about it, but it takes a lot of power to do that and constantly go up and down. You know, props to him. Yeah, and with all the that extra weight that you're gonna have on top, because those those costumes, they take a lot of muscle to be able to even walk and perform in yeah. those things. And they don't like, breathe well either. No, and it's not like having makeup. I mean, yes, makeup and having to perform and emote through that is a challenge, mm -hmm. but that's typically not a whole lot of weight that gets added to you. These giant costumes in a studio where it's probably already warm because you've got all these set lights that are on yeah. top of you and now you're inside this suit mm -mm. 
That's that, that takes a special kind of performer to put those on. And if you really watch the show, Binya Binya does a lot of squatting. Mm-hmm. And that's really going to tear your legs up. If you want to do leg day at the gym, just do the Binya Binya workout. Oh, gosh. <laughs> um, yeah, on the topic of Binya Binya, before we move on, I always wonder how he was able to control his eyes and mouth so well. And I'm wondering if there's like a person offset who had like special animatronic controls that would move it for him. Kind of like how dinosaurs had like remote puppeteers off screen helping with like the, their big costumes too, because um, those costumes are so heavy, they have limited motion and they required like additional help just to get all the right facial expressions, um, you know, using those different parts. So maybe there's some shared technology there. I'm not, I don't know for sure. Yeah, I, I think that's that sounds about right, uh, especially because you've got the the guy who helped work on Muppets before. You good there? Yeah. Uh, but also, the, the you're gonna have to because there's no way that the performer inside would be able to move the rest of the body and the head animatronics oh at the same time. It, it had to be. It's a little different than Dee Bradley Baker, like pulling on some wires inside Olmec's head to move his mouth and eyes. Like imagine trying to do that while also break dancing and hopping. That's you gotta be some like crazy drummer guy who can think with their limbs to do that and coordinate it. Yeah. I'm just amazed that people can play an instrument and sing at the same time. Cause I don't, I'm like, I can sing, but I can't play an instrument. <laughs> Not with saxophone unless you're Homer Simpson, oh. because he just blows through and goes, saxophone, saxophone, saxophone. Well, for this uh, next portion of the episode, I'm going to divert most of this to Brett, uh, because I know Megan's not going to have favorite characters, because, again, outside of uh, Binya Binya and uh, Ron and Natalie, do you have any memories of any of the kids? No. Or anyone else in the I mean, show? weren't they little? Like, they were pretty little. Yeah, though, they were pretty, they? yeah, they were. <sighs> they were around, like, 8 to 12, depending on who the actor was so not as little as you think except for one of them which i'm going to mention first okay. actually as I, was, I knew there was like i was like what i think one of them was a little bit but i don't remember so but yeah i mostly remember the mom and dad so as far as the yeah. characters go i'm going to divert to brett yeah i came across a lot of uh charming characters while i was on this island and uh i was just going to roll through which ones i connect with and why briefly uh starting off with my personal favorite simeon alston uh, who's the youngest of the cast. He was played by Simeon Othello Days. And uh, I just love him because he's so darn cute, for, especially for the first couple of seasons, just kind of walking around and playing along. And uh, I actually remember hearing a story on the, on the Barney podcast that I mentioned before on how he had a little incident where he was traumatized when he saw Binya backstage without his head on. Because that's, that's how... That's how he only knew Binya Binya was on set because he was so young and used yeah. to him like being his friend around. So, you know, yeah. from what I gathered from their conversation, they had a talk and set things straight. And he's like, oh, he's Binya's friend. You know, it's OK. He's just here to help. And so I, 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 I would love to pick his brain sometime if we ever get him on the podcast on what it's like to literally grow up on a TV show mm-hmm. as one of your first memories. Yeah. Uh, but I, I just love that little extra spark of magic that his his smile brings to the show and just the sense of curiosity and wonder. It, it, it's the kind of thing that makes me want to be a father because he's he's so adorable in whatever thing he does, whether like he's playing baseball with a, a plastic bowling pin or he's like picking daffodils with Ron in a field. It's I love it. <laughs> um, there's also James Alston, who's the the character son, not the real life son of Ron and Natalie in the show. Uh, of course, he's played by James Edward Coleman II. And uh, well, I also mentioned from before, he does have some uh, Alfie and Goo vibes from my brother and me based on the way he talks. And, you know, he even raps in a few situations too on the show, which I, I wasn't expecting, but I was I was there for the ride. It definitely reminded me of like the Goo Punch song and uh, some performances on all that too. So he he had a lot of attitude both good and bad but i think he was one of the most well-balanced characters because 
of all the instances where he kind of goofed up, uh, he was able to learn from his mistakes and become a, a better person as, as a result. Now, how was he on the show, like, at the time it started? I didn't make a note of any of their ages just because I didn't have time to dig that deep, but he looks like he's around seven or eight. Okay. Okay. Yeah, and this was, like, in 94. Um, of course, we have Binya Binya Polywog, and if you can get past the whole extra talking bit where he just sticks to maybe one or two words. I, I find him pretty fun. You know, he's bright yellow. He catches your attention on screen. He's perfect for little kids. I love how sometimes he really gets into the theme of the day where he, mm -hmm. he puts on fake hair to have like a fashion show with the girls or even dresses up as a clown to cheer, cheer up Shayna at her birthday party. Uh, or one of my personal favorites, he, um, he wears like a ranger hat and badge and goes goes off to um, one of the nature parks with Ranger Mike to essentially see what it's like to be him for a day. And so he gets Aww. to interact with all the people who are coming into the park and even the other rangers to teach them about what they're doing. And I, I like the versatility that Binya Binya has throughout the show based on all of the episodes that I watched, which is about like 65 out of the 70 of them, um, wow. just because he's able to live up to the expectations of the producers every single time. He break dances, he jumps, he plays basketball, you name it. Um, I, I think he's one of the most versatile characters of the entire show, so I give him much respect for doing what he did, even though it, it looks simpler or easier than you'd expect. Yeah. Yeah, I never really found Binya Binya annoying like he did. but Most people don't. Yeah, I was always cute. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a cute little character. He's always smiling, too. Yeah. <laughs> I'm definitely the minority for that one, but that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. Uh, of course, we have Ron and Nas Natalie Alston, played by Ron and Natalie Days. And personally, I think they're a power couple of Nickelodeon. Like, if we ever do a, a favorite Nick Parents episode, they would be on my list just because they, they work so well together. Ron's a reporter. Natalie often stays at home helping the kids. And they're just very creative. They're crafty. They always find uh, a unique way to get the kids together to do something with them and have a fun day together and squeeze in some lessons too without being heavy handed. So I, I appreciate their, their cheerful disposition on screen whenever they're there. Yeah. And I will say they are incredibly inviting uh, because we've, we've seen hosts whenever they talk directly to the camera. And I mean, you and I had even commented on how as kids, we would get semi frustrated with Steve uh, but again, because he's talking to small kids, but the way Natalie just opens the show with "Hi there, hey there," and it's it you're instantly welcomed. Yeah. Uh, she bookends it, the show because she ends with a lesson mm -hmm. too before the credits. Mm -hmm. And and then Ron comes in and he he's just bubbly and fun and how can you not like these two? I mean, even as a even as a stubborn little jerk of a child. I still liked these two. Yeah. And then uh, and then Binya Binya would show up. I was like, no, go away. I want to see this. <laughs> I want to see the family. Go away. But Ron and Natalie, power up. They definitely feel like relatives to me based on how I connected with them on the show. And uh, just going back to something I overheard uh, in some of their past interviews, uh, Ron often would mention, you know, people who tuned up with the show has a different experience from him performing on the show. And he'd get all these random kids like coming up to him on the street, giving him hugs and the stay at home moms are like, oh, look, it's Ron. And then the dad's like, oh, wait, don't don't go hugging a stranger. That might be dangerous. But, you know, if you don't have context for what's happening, then yeah. you don't it's hard to make sense of. But I I always love when um, you know, people watch TV shows and they feel so positively influenced by mm -hmm. who they connect with that they're they're able to share their experiences with them in person and just remind them that you are making a difference in the world. Thank you for yeah. bringing us all the joy that you're able to do through your unique talents. And it really puts things into perspective when you see those moments unfold, even for us too in our lives. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the thing is, and we've said this before, but even though most of these people who are on Nickelodeon, not just Gola Gola, but most of them, they were just making a show. And to them, it's just a job. And they were doing the best that they could, but the things they were doing and the lessons they were giving, and uh, and, and in the, the case of Gola Gola, when they were actually actively trying to push culture and what their lives were and educating people uh, through a children's television show, a lot of these shows really made a huge impact 
on a lot of our lives, and Gullah Gullah is definitely within that realm, that uh, Ron and Natalie, very, very honored mm -hmm. to have grown up as a child watching this show, which I can far more appreciate now, and I wish I was able to go back and tell myself to watch the show more and not be mm -hmm. such a turd. Yeah, yeah, they definitely deserve a Lifetime Achievement Award for all the work they do. Absolutely. Uh, moving on to other characters, I, I mentioned this this character briefly before, but uh, Ranger Mike Walker, uh, he he's kind of like the naturalist of the group who occasionally show up and take the kids to other places outside of the the Gullah Gullah Island house area that we're all familiar with. You know, typically parks, showing them different animals. Um, I, I I really I really appreciate him because he's not typically an actor; he's an actual ranger from south carolina and he somehow got involved with the show but he does his best to give 110 mm -hmm. percent um and just bring more awareness to how how important it is to treat and respect nature kind of like the lorax or zz zip from salute your shorts so they they get a gold star in my book for you know what they're able to contribute to the the overall mission of Gullah Gullah island and apparently he's still a ranger today in um, huntington beach state park on murals inlet in south carolina so if you're in the area go say hi to ranger mike he's still there yeah. as an uh, interpretive ranger wow we're gonna have to go to uh, south carolina now <laughs> yeah gotta gotta plan a splat attack trip and do a, a live correspondence well we have a friend in south carolina too oh even better i've got family there too so we all have a reason to go to go to the island <laughs> so we have you know as our other neighborhood pals jessica who's played by jessica gorski uh, we have Brian, played by Brian Nguyen, Vanessa, who of course is Vanessa Baden from Keenan Kel fame, who played Kyra there, uh, Shayna, who was the only live action character to be replaced uh, throughout the series, because in se season four, uh, she had a, a new actress portray her role, uh, played by Tristan Mays, and that was just basically due to the fact that she retired from acting, she didn't see an interest in it anymore, and she mm. basically went to college to nursing after that. Nice. Um, we also have Armando, who's played by Armando Guerra. Uh, Abuelo, who's Armando's grandfather on the show, played by Manolo Villaverde, who definitely gives me Ricky Ricardo vibes with a dash of stew pickles, because he's like part <laughs> inventor, part repairman, part uh, bongo player. We have Marisol, played by Anna Christina Randolph, who gives me Betty Ann vibes from Are You Afraid of the Dark. Juana, played by Iris Cha Song, uh, who is Armando's mother and occasionally shows up to sing and dance with everybody. And then we have Corey, played by Corey Hayes. There's also a few others, but it was hard for me to pick out their names as they were joining in with the singing and dancing. So if any of you Slimesters happen to pick up on kids from the show that you, you feel need credit on here, just let us know in the YouTube comments so that we can give them due respect. Uh, also, we, we have a couple of semi-celebrity cameos. Gullah Gullah isn't quite as famous as other shows at the time on Nickelodeon. But they did have basketball player Dennis Scott, who was on Orlando Magic and I believe the, the Texas Mavericks. Um, he appeared in the Gullah Gullah Games episode. He was the, the big, tall basketball player wearing the red shirt, uh, encouraging James and friends to do like their special basketball hoop shots uh, at the end of the Gullah Gullah Games. So definitely check out that episode if you're interested. And then, of course, we have Pixie Whales, which we mentioned recently, actually, on our Patreon episode. Uh, battle of Keenan and Kel, uh, who was also the judge from the Tainting of the Screw episode. So there's another connection for you there from 90s Nick history. Alrighty, moving on to the noteworthy songs. And depending on how sing-songy you feel, you can sing some of these. If not, that's fine too. Uh, we have Move Your Body from season one, episode seven, which I believe is of the same title where basically Ron and Natalie are telling the kids how to how to dance and they have like a little disco thing in the living room by the end which is a lot of fun they even get up in uh, 70s clothing to like do the whole <laughs> thing we have uh, big, big Fat Biscuits from season 1 episode 11 which is a, a fun song about food we have a double dutch song which eludes me at the moment but i'm sure if you heard it you'd recognize it because that episode is all about jump rope and just singing mm -hmm. you know playing cool hip-hop tunes uh that go along with all the all the fast maneuvering yeah devil dutch was really huge in the 90s yeah it was a big thing and yeah I'm good at it <laughs> and yeah. i wanted for to a, double dutch so bad. 
for a while in elementary school, people love playing that on like the recess playgrounds or in gym class. And I'm like, I have a hard enough time with one rope. You want me to jump through two <laughs> and keep going? Forget it. I don't know how to do it. It's hard. Yeah, even virtual jump roping is hard for me to do. Like getting the button <laughs> timing just right. <laughs> Um, there's also do as I do follow, follow me, which is a pretty catchy, uh, ear tune from several of the episodes. Uh, here we go. Loop de loo, of course, uh, do the thing you do from season two, episode four exercise is fun to do from season two, episode four. I've got to be me season two, episode 19, which I think is called get out of my hair where they have like a hairstyling thing going on. Uh, who stole from the cookies from the cookie jar? And then jump in, jump out, which is a song to introduce yourself. The one that stood out to me most uh, of those two actually is uh, Move Your Body. And um, uh, was it Exercise is Fun to Do? Yeah. Like, I had a hard time finding the episode during this research uh, for the retrospective. But as soon as I heard the song, I knew exactly what it was. It like mm -hmm. immediately transported me to that early memory of seeing it as like a kid. And I love when that happens. It just awakens <laughs> something special in you. And it goes something like, exercise is fun to do. Come on, everybody, you can do it too. Exercise every day. I now that you've sang it, I was like, I don't remember that. <laughs> See, exactly. That's what happened to me. Once you once you get into the lyrics, it's like you have a nostalgia bomb in your head. Going. Yes. Music. Yeah. Okay, Slimesters. So uh, before we get a little bit deeper into some of our retrospective material, we're going to take a commercial break. But don't go anywhere because we'll be setting up something real special in the sandcastles here on Gullah Gullah Island. If you love camp or hate it, food bites, bugs bite, activities bite, everything bites. Watch Salute Your Shorts weekdays at 5.30, 4.30 Central on Nickelodeon. You know who loves orange soda, and you know what happened to the tuna. But do you remember the grocery bagging competition? We are joined by Mike O'Connor for an episode battle of Keenan and Kel. Together we pit the tainting of the screw against the overlooked Baggin Sagan Kel. You will only find this episode available on Patreon. Go to patreon.com slash splatattack to gain access to this episode as well as a backlog of slime-tastic episodes. While you're here, please hit the like button, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. YouTube likes their algorithms and this helps us to gain our following. If you're listening on a podcast app, please leave us a review. Apps also like their algorithms, and doing so helps us grow our channel there, too. As always, you are all gactastic. We can't thank you enough, and we will see you at Rigby's. You're watching Nick Jr. All right, Slimesters, we're back. We set up our sandcastles, and we hung out on the beach for a little bit playing Limbo. Uh, and we're a little bit tired out from doing all that. So we're going to come back to our retrospective and talk about some noteworthy episodes from the series with you. Alex, would you like to take it away? Certainly. Uh, on season one, episode two, we have the Charleston Market, uh, which is when they were visiting the historic South Carolina market, which was a really fun one. Uh, season one, episode four, Gullah Gullah Island Day. In this episode, we were learning about Gullah heritage and culture. Season 2, Episode 7, once again we bring back Move Your Body. Uh, for this one they were demonstrating the importance of exercise and keeping your body limber. And, very bad at. and Season 2, Episode 9, Beat It! How appropriate for the title. And this, this episode was all about learning rhythm. Uh, so, something our pastor needs to learn a lot of during <laughs> praise and worship. Uh, season two, episode eighteen, grandmas and grandpas, which obviously is all about grandparents. Uh, season three, episode one, what's up with jobs? 
Uh, Binya Binya joins Ranger Mike at his job, which is a pretty fun thing to see. And Brent mentioned mm-hmm. a while ago. He got to drive the little like golf cart around the trail, and I there was a time where he veered off the road, and Ranger's like, "No, stop! We got to drive this way." <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah, I, I love that. Some people got some very candid reactions when Binya Binya was handing them like park brochures when they were first entering the camp. The kids loved it. Some of the older folks are like, ooh, ooh, what, what am I getting into? <laughs> uh, season three, episode four, we have the Gullah Gullah Games, which was uh, all about teaching the importance of practice. Uh, season three, episode 11, Fixing a Hurt. Uh, in this episode, Ranger Mike takes uh, Shayna to the vet to help an injured animal. Uh, how appropriate. Mm. Uh, it, was, for- it was a very sweet one. For, and, and the reason I say how appropriate is if you want to know, check out the bonus episode or check out our bonus content over on Patreon. Uh, season three, episode 12, special places. And, and for for adults, this is especially a good one because it's a quiet place to go when you get annoyed. Uh, a lesson everyone could benefit from. Yeah. Uh, season four, episode six, Binya, the Barbarian. Uh, this one's all about learning proper table etiquette. Something I definitely do not use. <laughs> uh, season 4, Episode 8, uh, our last one on the list, uh, is uh, Gullah Rocks, which is all about building confidence and being yourself. Yeah, there's a lot of great assortment of episodes there. Um, just to add a few of them that I noted afterwards... Um, particularly more focusing on the lessons Mm -hmm. is uh, season one, episode nine, oops, where mistakes are part of life and people don't love you any less if you mess up once in a while. Uh, Season one, episode 11, please don't eat the Alstons, which discusses the importance of good nutrition and not making assumptions and jumping to conclusions. Uh, This is the one where James blames Vanessa for eating all the cookies in the cookie jar and we get that Mm -hmm. catchy song. Uh, we've got the season two, episode five, one that we mentioned before, Double Dutch, which, you know, is also about practice, where if you keep practicing and trying, you can do anything you want to do. And I think for Shana and Vanessa, they wanted to get on the Double Dutch team. And James ended up getting on the team, too, as like the drummer to help them keep rhythm. So I really enjoyed that, just seeing them more in real life uh, more often than on the set. Uh, there's also episode two. I mean, sorry, season two, episode six. Look who's balking now. Uh, where older siblings play an important role when new siblings are born. And this is in reference to Jessica coming to terms with uh, her baby sister being born and having all of her uh, attention being diverted to the baby. It actually reminds me a lot of uh, the Rugrats episode, Angelica's Worst Nightmare, where her worst fears are Angelica's losing all of her attention from her parents. So I can imagine for young kids who are used to being the single child, it's a bit of an adjustment so for anyone out there who can relate to that that's an episode worth checking out and then lastly season two episode 10 armando's armando's new home where the kid learn the kids learn the importance of having rules Mm -hmm. and they they pretty much rebelled against the parents saying like we hate all these rules why do we need rules all the time and then to teach them a lesson you know natalie ron and um armando's mother were like okay you don't like rules we don't care. And they, they essentially have a, a slumber party where they just do everything they want. And by the time they get to the end of the episode, they're all worn out from doing all the crazy stuff. And I remember like Vanessa tries on a bunch of makeup and gets a little crazy looking. And uh, it's, <laughs> there's a lot of, there are a lot of kid hijinks where the, the lesson teaches them that, okay, maybe we should have some rules, but not too many that kind of stifles our fun. Well, in the uh, in the realm of merchandise, because there are some Nickelodeon shows, especially Nick Jr. shows, where they are just a powerhouse of merchandise. I mean, the the Rugrats alone. Oh my goodness, the amount of merchandise they had for that. There's some Rugrats or uh, some Ren and Stimpy. Almost, almost no Nickelodeon Doug. There's some Disney Doug. But uh, Blue's even Clues. Find Rugrats still in the store today. I still mm-hmm. see them on women's and girls t-shirts. And as far as, as far as Nick Jr. goes, Blue's Clues, that was a beast too. And that's still going strong. Uh, especially with Blue's Clues and you. Uh, Gullah Gullah Island, there wasn't really a whole lot. Uh, there were 
several released at the at the height of their show's popularity, uh, featuring existing storylines and songs uh, stemming from the core formula. There was a lot of books. Uh, but as for the show itself, all four seasons can be found on Amazon Prime. And, uh, and they are also, I believe, on uh, Paramount+. Plus. Uh, but there was a series of the uh, DVDs that you could have purchased through Amazon and they would burn them, the, the on-demand DVDs, but obviously that's no longer a thing. And uh, Noggin, uh, you can also find the whole series on mm-hmm. Noggin. There's also been some shirts from the show floating around on Instagram. Uh, so there's there's some pretty cool things, but there was a lot, there were a few VHS and there were a few, there was quite a few books, but that was pretty pretty much the extent. I'm honestly surprised and if it does exist, please somebody show me, but I'm pretty sure that I'm surprised they didn't come up with a Binya Binya doll. Uh, yeah, that would be easy shocked. money. Yeah. They came out with an Allegro's window doll and that was a little bit after. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, surprising. Do like the Garfield route and give it suction cups and stick it in the window oh, of the car. Geez, I remember that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a clever way to get other people who are driving around you to watch the show. <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, while, while I'm thinking of the merchandise, uh, if you're into the, the whole song aspect of Gullah Gullah Island, there's a whole playlist on YouTube that you can check out that has tracks from the show. Uh, so if you, if you just love to tune in the show for the singing and dancing and kind of want to get up and move around during the day, go check that out. We'll um, put the playlist link in the bio uh, for the release of this episode. Uh, all right. So even though I'm on the beach, uh, far away from any mailbox, <laughs> apparently I have a couple of letters from Mona. So, you know, Mona, she's, she's going to get it to you in some she'll, form. She'll follow us to the ends of the earth in her little motorboat. And I, I welcome it because she's just a lovely character. So let's go check out what Mona has for us, shall we? All right, so for Mona's Mailbag, uh, we actually had a couple of reviews come in since our last segment, which was a while ago. Uh, so we decided to share them here and show show them some love for uh, t- tuning into our podcast and sharing their thoughts. We've got uh, a couple of reviews here from Apple Podcasts. So if you enjoy our show as well, just take a minute or two, head on over to Apple Podcasts, give us a review if you'd like, give us a rating, help us grow our podcast and uh, become more visible to the 90s Nick fans. So this one comes from my friend Ginger, who I actually met through my apartment complex. Uh, I told her about the podcast and she listened to it. And here's what she had to say. Her words, not mine. The title is awesome. I really enjoyed this podcast. I got to know Brett when I was working as a leasing agent and was stoked to learn about the podcast. I've told my friends as well, keep them coming. Thank you very much, Ginger. I appreciate your enthusiasm. If you have any specific episodes that you appreciate that we've done so far, definitely let us know in a follow-up review or an email at splatattack2021 at gmail.com. Moving on, we have another review that's short and sweet from Scrump the Giant. And the title is, I Love This. Scrump says, I've only found this because of BOC, big orange couch in parentheses. I'm here for this. A nice smoke and coffee show as well. <laughs> I don't know how to interpret smoke and coffee show, but if it's your thing, we're, we love to have you here. Uh, especially since we're reaching out to more 90s Nick fans. So thank you, Scrump, for leaving the review, tuning in, and uh, you know helping us get a little bit more visible on the crowded space of the internet. So with that being said, any final thoughts, Alex, Megan, about visiting Gullah Gullah Island? Uh, the Scrump the Giant. Let me know if this is what, what you're thinking, because uh, I think uh, whenever I, I hear someone say uh, smoking coffee, it's it's usually like when you would go to a coffee shop and would just sit and have a, especially back in the day, mm-hmm. sit back, just have a smoke and a coffee and just share ideas and, and carry the conversation back and forth to each other, which is exactly what you and I do. So yeah. I'm assuming that's what you're talking about, uh, Scrump. So Hopefully it's a positive thing. If, <laughs> I, yeah, I, I do believe it's a positive thing. So thank you both uh, both of you so much for your re- reviews. They they mean a lot to us. Yes. Uh, they, thank you. Uh, as always, they help others find us. It helps the the algorithm. The algorithm loves interaction. So that's a big deal for us. So thank you. Mm-hmm. Uh, final thoughts is 
I really enjoyed going back and watching this, uh, watching the show. I didn't get to watch nearly as much as what Brett did, but I did watch about three or four episodes of each season, and it's it's still adorable. Mm-hmm. And I really hope that as my little one gets a little older, that I can start introducing him to some of these because I've we've tried to introduce him to Blue's Clues. He's not quite there yet. But I do think here within the next few months, he will be Blue's Clues ready and Gullah Gullah ready. So he's, I'm hoping to break away from some of the usual programming yeah. that he, he watches because uh, it's fine. But three years of Mickey Mouse Clubhouse, it, it's time to move on to another show, buddy. Yeah, I agree. Disney has enough fans. We need more Nickelodeon fans, especially of current generations who are, who are just exploring all the, all the content that is out there for kids' entertainment. Gotta start with the classics. And thank you, Megan, for joining us for one final episode for the season. Absolutely. Well, depending on if you count the mini so that's coming up. Yeah. But yes, thank you very much for joining us, Megan. We appreciate yes, you having you. here and sharing your memories of the show with us. Thank you very much. I love being on the show with you guys. I, I hope I'm not too much of an annoying guest. Yes, you are. I can't stand you. Go away. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully the, the uh, fellow... YouTubers and followers and Slimester. patrons, Slimester, yeah. all of you, don't uh, don't mind my presence on the show. <laughs> Personally, I find your Meg Reacts mini so it's quite fun. So Yay! I'm excited to see more of those next season. Uh, yes, be sure to check out my Meg Reacts. Uh, I think we've got one more coming up. Yeah, by the by the time this episode releases, it yeah. should be coming out next week. Yes, so awesome. yeah, it will be coming up, and it was a fun one, and I'm really excited to see what. I'm going to be reacting to next season. Um, I'm hearing. Did I hear that Brett it might be picking? Has picked Brett, Brett, Brett picked the, the the themes. The themes, okay. Yeah, he so, picked the themes, and I'm picking the commercials. I know you told me some of them, but I've already forgot. So see, <laughs> that that's half the fun is finding out. I yeah. Mm. He asked me if I wanted to know, and I was like, sure. And then I was like, but I'll forget about it. Like, and I, I, and I have chance. already. So I'm very excited to do those. Um, I may even allow another special guest to join me who's a little bit shorter than I am. <laughs> does he rhyme with am? <laughs> yeah. Wouldn't, we might have he like Does he like green eggs and hammy? <laughs> we're asking him every day. Yeah, every uh, our son Sam, every Sunday, our, our senior pastor will, Hey, Sammy, do you like green eggs and hammy? Every, every <laughs> week. Like, but no. we may have him <laughs> join for the Halloween commercials episode because it's Halloween be fun. and he yeah. loves those. But anyway. Yes. Cool. What's our closing our, question? Yes. Uh, let's let's pack up all of our gear and uh, head on the, the next ferry back to the inland. Our closing question for all you Slimesters before we go. What do you love most about Gullah Gullah Island? Are there any specific episodes or memories that you can recall that you'd like to share with us? Write to us via email at splatattack2021 at gmail.com or DM us on Instagram at splatattackpodcast. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel at splatattackpodcast or interact with us wherever you find us on social media. You know, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Reddit, Facebook, Patreon even, wherever you can find us. We just love chatting it up about 90s Nick and uh, keeping the spirit of this golden age alive for uh, future generations. Tune in next time, Slimesters, when we return to Camp Anawana once more to witness a fierce episode battle between two Titan campers, Michael and Pinsky, because they're both coming to camp, according to the episode <laughs> titles. <laughs> this episode was suggested to us by a fan, so we're excited to see who will win this long time heated debate and which one will be sent packing his bags going back home. You can find this retrorific episode only here on Splat Attack. Until then, Alex, will you drain the slime tank for us, please? I'm going to take a break on the beach while the slime tank refuels for our next adventure. I I echo Captain. I shall join you. (laughs) While you're doing that, I'll be dancing with Binya Binya and the kids. Oh yeah! Let's all go to Gullah Gullah Island. Uh, no. We're already there. Camp Anawana is our next destination. Ah, right. (laughs) Another wonderful summer destination. (laughs) It also has another catchy theme song. You're right. I think we're just, we're just on a roll with camp and singing. (laughs) Camp Town Races, sing this song. Do-da, do-da. Camp Town Races, sing this song. Oh, do-da day. 
Let's watch you later, Slimesters. Bye. Reprise the theme song and roll the credits. <laughs> It's time for me to go. I'm glad that's over. Now for a peaceful night's sleep. Well, that does it for now. Yeah, we gotta catch a train. Since I'm going home, you can't my arts and crafts project. It's a tweezer holder. All right, guys. Let's go far. How long have we been away? <laughs> See you soon. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. <laughs> Make believe and pretending are kind of a game. Sure it is. Why all this interest in games, James? I've been making dolls since I was oh about your age. I started out just helping my grandma make them. Then she taught me how to make them myself. It doesn't matter to us if you mess up. Just be yourself and have fun. Play the drum, Simpson. Show everybody what you can do. Uh, I like